Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast. Headed into our final segment of the day, we're going to be giving some injury updates for the New York Knicks and asking the question, can they overcome this slew of injuries they have unfortunately been put up against? Where we've known, you know, really since Julius Randle left the team months ago that it was going to be a little bit more of a limited Knicks roster to try and make this postseason run, but things have just continued to get more complicated for them with um, the injury to Mitchell Robinson. He has been ruled out for the remainder of the postseason, and then on game during Game 2 the other night, we saw two of the Knicks starters dealing with injuries. First, it was Jalen Brunson, who had a foot injury that we still don't have a ton of information on what exactly happened, what exactly it is, but he was able to return for the second half after missing the entire second quarter and seemed to be, even though he was laboring some on that foot, he was at least you know a productive version of himself but he is listed as questionable. I would imagine he's going to play. Game three is tonight in Indiana, so we will have information on that in the coming hours. But less positive is the fact that OG Ananobi went down with a hamstring injury late in the third quarter of that game two matchup, and he's been ruled out with a strain in that left hamstring. Now, the Knicks have a 2-0 lead over the Pacers as things currently stand in Indiana it seems like they are maybe a little bit more willing there's some more wiggle room I should say in terms of them being able to get away with a potential loss but obviously it would help them a lot now the Celtics even just dropped a game to the Cavaliers if they could get as much time as possible sort of getting ahead of the Celtics in terms of schedule and trying to rest up a little bit more on the Celtics end, they would like to be the first ones done with their series because they are waiting on Kristaps Porzingis to come back from the Soleus strain. So both of these teams a little bit banged up, but you know, for the Knicks, before they can even necessarily think about what's going on with that Celtics situation, they do have to make sure that they are able to hold off the Pacers in this series where I know they take the 2-0 lead, but I do feel like the Pacers have played pretty well now. Absolutely, they have to be sort of kicking themselves that neither one of those games they were able to come away with. Game one, really up until the fourth quarter, that seemed like their game. They got incredible bench production And it wasn't until the final few minutes where, yes, as we know, some calls sort of went um, went the other way for them. This is something I meant to bring up on the show yesterday, but how about the report that the Pacers have filed a complaint for 78 calls over the first two games? Just absolutely ridiculous stuff. And listen, I understand refereeing can definitely feel slanted against you, but to put out an extensive list like that is definitely um, a bit much in my eyes. Now, again, I understand the frustration that can come with refereeing at times, but Pacers are sort of, they do have themselves to blame because, listen, I've always had this philosophy. I don't believe that refereeing can fully give the game away. I was kind of shocked to see Brian Windhorst on ESPN specifically come out and say on national television that the refs cost the Pacers game one. And they definitely made some calls down the stretch there that were incredibly questionable. It was the kickball violation where it was clearly not a kickball. It was Neesmith's hand that hit the ball. And then the illegal screen call that had a lot of people mad. So listen, again, I understand how frustrating that can be, but it just seems, you know, a bit much for them to be so mad about the referees as a whole where it seems like they have been underachieving with opportunities to close out either one of these games. So again, Maybe some calls down the stretch of game one, but Tyrese Halliburton only scored six points in that game, was not effective whatsoever. He is more involved in game two, but 
ultimately, even with the injuries to Ananobi, who was really good in that game, you miss Jalen Brunson for a stretch of that. The Pacers have the halftime lead. Brunson comes back, and they just had no answers for him and the Knicks continued to sort of light it up against them from the three-point line late in that game. So the Knicks are minus 320 favorites, according to DraftKings, to win this series against the Pacers. I feel like it's going to be a very, you know, again, it seems pretty one-sided, but the Pacers have played well at home this season. That's what happens with these young teams and I think that they can take at least one of these games. I wouldn't be surprised if Indiana is able to take both. I've been saying, you know, coming into the series, I feel like this could be a closer series than people expect. Now, I've always been on the Knicks, but I am sort of waiting for the Pacers to throw their punch. And they've had their chances to, which is maybe a little bit of a death sentence that they haven't been able to capitalize on any of these chances that they've had up to this point, but I do still have this little bit of faith in them to make this more of a series, but for the Knicks as a whole, even if they make it past Indiana, I worry about them in terms of being able to actually win the finals. Now, that's obviously something that you know, more times than not, if you say you have worries about a team winning the finals, you're probably right. Only one team can take it home. I sort of felt like this was a season to get yourselves right a little bit. But prior to, you know, when they made the OG Ananobi trade, I thought that it was a really nice move to help solidify their roster headed into next season. I do still feel like they are a little bit one year away. Now, obviously, they win the playoff series against the Cavaliers last season as a five seed. So they, at least seeding wise, overachieved in that aspect. But especially with all of these injuries piling up, I just don't think that they have the depth. If it's the Celtics that they face, I I really don't like their chances there. And then, you know, God forbid they are able to beat the Celtics. I think that the Timberwolves and Nuggets are just on a different tier right now. And listen, I know that the Knicks are sort of America's sweetheart right now and everybody is falling for them for good reason. Brunson has been, you know, probably, I would say, best or second best player in the playoffs so far, it's a little bit of a debate between he and Anthony Edwards. I would probably lean Brunson, though. The type of performances he's been giving, it's a lot of fun. And it's good to see the Knicks being relevant again. I just feel like we are probably looking at a year-out situation here. And I think that they'll be back, especially in this Eastern Conference, which is on the weaker side. But I... I don't feel good about the Knicks as things currently stand trying to balance all of these injuries. We know they have already been dealing with a little bit of a shortened rotation. It was essentially a six-man rotation the other night where once Ananobi went down, Thibodeau didn't really have any other choices as to who to play. We saw, finally saw Alec Burks at least step into the game, but on, only played one minute, took one shot, so it's not like... He is expected to be a part of this run. Precious Achua, who was out of the rotation, basically to come in coming into this series and in game one, he, they're now relying on him for heavy minutes. And I like Achua as well. Thibodeau, I don't think does quite as much. And you know, he's a he's a good player. I thought that he was an underrated pickup in some specifically that OG Ananobi deal and the way that they were able to sort of piece into this. I I've talked about all these injuries and it sort of always, for whatever reason, I feel like Bojan Bogdanovic just always slips my mind, hasn't gotten a ton of time in a Knicks jersey, but they are also missing him as well, which is a key bench piece. And, you know, Tibbs gets a lot of slack i think for the lack of using a bench we saw we talked about this yesterday on the podcast the fact that josh hart has played four entire games so far in their postseason run that's the most since jimmy butler and 2013 i believe was the year when he was with the bulls being coached by tom thibodeau so 
And there's obviously a reputation about him maybe overplaying his players a little bit. But at the same time, the Knicks have this chance right now to continue on their postseason run. They are not focused on next year. They are trying to win the games today. And he's giving them the best chance to do so with their stars. You know, I'm a Celtics fan. I sort of wish at times they would lean more heavily on the starters. So as much as it's something that definitely is a conversation point, and could have risks in the long run. We saw the way that Joakim Noah was basically worked to the bone and was just never the same player when he was playing under Tibbs in Chicago, but I don't blame him necessarily for the way that things currently stand. Knock on wood that nothing serious does happen long term in terms of the ramifications of sort of the health surrounding these players, but I think that they have to, you know, kind of take their shot as things currently stand. So hello to our uh, guests right now. But I think that ultimately here, Knicks, they are plus 1,300 to win the NBA Finals. In order to come out of the conference as things currently stand, they are plus 380. So odds definitely not in their favor. But at the same time, you know... I can fully understand if you're Tom Thibodeau, you're not going to punt on this season in the playoffs because you feel like there is possibly a better chance next year. Every single game, they are going to get out there and play the best players available. And they don't necessarily have tons of options off of the bench. Curious to see whether or not Alec Burks could actually, you know, become a player for them. He was actually playing some solid basketball in Detroit. I was frustrated from a developmental standpoint of the Pistons. They are trying to you know, build up all of these young pieces that they currently have. Why is Alec Burks taking all of these shots? But you know, for the Knicks, I don't know, maybe he could come in and provide some sort of offense. I know that defense has never really been his strong suit, but something to think about, especially with Jalen Brunson dealing with whatever his injury as well. Again, I would assume that he plays tonight to be able to um, give the Knicks even a shot to win tonight because with no OG and with no Brunson in Indiana, I don't know if they would have any sort of a choice what's, or chance, I should say, whatsoever. But let me know in the comment section what you think about this. I feel like, again... Championship hopes this year probably aren't there, at least in my eyes, in terms of what the Knicks can do. But I still feel like they do close out this Pacers series, and they can still be a tough out. When Jalen Brunson is playing and to the level that he has been in the beginning of the postseason here, I think that they could easily you know, make things interesting no matter who the opponent is. But again, let me know what you think in the comment section. That is all we have time for today, though. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sports Podcast. Thank you to the GSMC Sports Network for allowing us to host this show. Remember to like, follow, subscribe wherever you keep up with us. Check us out on social media as well for more exclusive short content. And we will be back on Monday afternoon, 2 p.m. Eastern. Have a great, great weekend. Take care. We will see you then. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow. Feel like it's going to be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great.